Hey there, this is Gora back again. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So I hope that you have enjoyed the previous video that is SSO part 1. So this video will be all about SSO part 2. Now let's see what are the things that you are going to learn today in this video. So here is my one request. So I am requesting you before going to start SSO part 2, please go and watch SSO part 1. There we have seen like what is SSO, why do you need SSO in very fun way and that will give you enough motivation to start learning SSO. Please go and have a watch. I will give you the link in the description below. So now I am assuming that you have already seen SSO part 1. Now in case if you know about SSO but you want to know about SSO authentication flow in details then you can stay with this. Still it's better if you can see part 1 before it. So in part 2 we will discuss about what are the advantages that SSO has how SSO authentication flow works with complete flow diagram like what are the entities that it has, how can they interact to each other, how SSO authentication flow can be initiated etc. We will learn all this thing in detail in fun way. Then we will see what is SAML. So this is all about part 2. So before going to start, let's see the doubt that we had in the previous video. Okay, so in the previous video that is SSO part 1, we have seen SSO or single sign on is an authentication scheme that enables users to securely authenticate with multiple applications and websites, right? By logging in only once, like having one set of credentials like username and password. That means with SSO, you just have to log in only one time. And with that, you can access multiple applications and websites. But the doubt was like where should I log in and how we can log in, right? So that was the doubt which we had in the previous video. Now that doubt will be cleared in this video when we will see like how SSO authentication flow works in detail. So now finally let's start today's session. Now in order to understand about SSO authentication flow, like how it works, you have to know about three important things user agent idp and sp now let's discuss all of them one by one so the first one is user agent so user agent is typically user web browser like from where you are sending the request to an application right from where you want to access some applications so here in this picture you can see this portion i'm talking about right like from where you are trying to access some application okay so now the next one is idp now idp is the most important part in sso authentication flow it stands for identity provider by looking at the name you can understand like what it does right so it plays the important role of producing identity so basically it provides identity so in the previous slide we have raised one doubt right that is login in for one time or once now the question was once where where should i log in for one time so the answer is in idp so you have to log in for one time in idp now idp will provide your identity to all the applications that you want to access okay so we will learn about it in details within a few minutes and the last one is sp sp stands for service provider Again, by looking at the name, you can understand like what it does. So it provides some service, service to you. So basically SP means the applications that we want to access, like from where we want to get some service. So you can see in this picture, I'm showing this part, like from where we want to get some service. Okay. So in SSO, we will have multiple SP, that is multiple service provider and IDP will provides our identity to SP like to applications or service provider. Now let's see how user agent IDP and SP interact each other. In SSO authentication flow, we have three entities. In the previous process or approach, we have already seen 
about user agent and service provider, right? Now IDP is what has introduced in SSO. Now let's see how they are interacting to each other. Okay, so while configuring SSO or SAML Federation, we establish a trust relationship between IDP and SP. Now if a user wants to access some service provider, he or she must first authenticate into IDP. So when he or she is successfully authenticated in IDP, then IDP will create something called SAML assertion. So it is what holds your credential or your identity. Now if you want to access some service provider, then you don't have to provide any further credential to that service provider or application. Now since the user is already authenticated in IDP, so here IDP will provide SAML assertion to SP. Now as there is a trust relationship between IDP and SP, so SP has trust on IDP. So by looking at SAML assertion, SP will easily understand that this is the user who has already authenticated in IDP. That means according to IDP, this user is a valid user or an authenticate user. So that means if he is an authenticate user for IDP, then he is an authenticate user for SP as well. That means you are good to go, like the user is now good to go. Now the user can access the service provider or I can say session can start. Now let's say if the user wants to access one more service provider. Now since he is authenticated previously in IDP, so again IDP will provide SAML assertion to that service provider as well. Now as there is a trust relationship between SP and IDP, so by looking at the SAML assertion, SP again will understand that you are an authenticate user for IDP. Hence, you are an authenticate user for me as well. So again, you are good to go. Again, the user now can access that service provider as well. Or I can say, now the session can start. Oh, it's fantastic. Now we can see like you have to provide your credential for one time to IDP in order to access two service provider. Now with this SAML assertion, you can now access more number of service provider. But there should be a trust relationship between IDP and the service provider that you have to establish while configuring SAML Federation or SSO. But wait, I have one doubt over here. Can I ask it? Yes? Okay, now let's see my doubt with a scenario. Now, let me show you my doubt with a scenario. Now let's consider there are three person like person A, person B and person C. Now person A wants to send some document or information to person C. But person A cannot send it directly to person C. It will be sent through person B. Okay. Now person A will send the document to person B. Please send this document to person C and tell him that this is what sent by person A. So now B will do the same. Now B will send the document to person C that this is what I was instructed. This is a document sent by person A. Now here is my doubt. How person C will believe on person B? Now how C can guarantee that this is a document or information which has been sent by person A? So basically there is a doubt, right? So it might be possible that somewhere in the middle someone has changed the document or the content of the document, right? So it might be possible. So anyway, person C cannot guarantee that this is a document that has been sent by A and this is the exact content that has been sent by A. So that part is not clear. So that is where I have my doubt. So can you guys relate this scenario? Yes? No? So is there any way that C can guarantee that this is a document that's sent by A? Yes, there is a way. Let's see that now. So now person A will not send the document directly to B. Person A will provide his signature on that means this document is now signed by person A, okay? Now person A will send the document to person B. Please send this document to person C and inform him that this is what sent by me, okay? Now as it is signed by A and A has already provided his signature, so no one can crack it in the middle, right? Now B will send the document to person C. Now C can crack it. And as he can crack it, so by looking at the signature, he can easily understand that yes, this is what sent by person A. 
So now with this signature, she can guarantee that this is a document that has been sent by person A and this is the exact content. So again, one more doubt will arise and that is how she can crack it. If no one can crack it in middle, how she can crack it? Who is C? Okay. So to get the answer for this doubt, just consider person A as IDP, person B as user agent and person C as SP. Yes. So first point that need to be clear that IDP will not provide SAML assertion directly to SP. It will be provided through user agent. Okay. And this SAML assertion document must be signed by IDP. Now let's see the answer like why SP or person C can crack the signature or document. So that is because while configuring SAML Federation or SSO, we have already established a trust relationship between IDP and SP. So SP only can crack the signature of IDP. Awesome. So the doubt is now clear, right? But you might be thinking like signature also can be cracked in middle, right? Yes, it is possible. But it is not the signature that you used to do in daily life. In computer science, cracking signature is not that easy, okay? Because they are using a very complex encryption method. So that is how IDP and SP can communicate to each other securely. And that is how IDP will provide your identity, your credential to SP in very secure manner. So all the SAML assertion file now must be signed by IDP. Now let's see what are the advantages that SSO provides to us. Here we go. So first one is it improves security habits. Yes. Now as you don't have to provide your credential to all the application individually, you just have to provide your credential for once in IDP. So now you don't have to remember your password for all the applications, right? So that is why now you don't have to use a weak password, you don't have to write your password in any notebook, in anywhere, in any platform. So thus it improves security habits. And the second one is it improves identity protection. Now in the previous approach, we have seen that we have to provide password or credential to all the applications, right? So that is why you may use a very weak password, okay? But now IDP is what provides your identity to SP right and also we have seen like how IDP will communicate with SP securely so thus I can say it improves identity protection and the next one is it increases the speed yes now with SSO you just have to log in only once in IDP and with that you can access multiple application without providing any credential so thus it reduces the time and increases the speed okay and the next one is it reduces the help desk workload yeah now you don't have to click on the forgot password right because you are not remembering your password again and again for all the applications because their idp is what taking care of all these things and the last one it provides a better user experience yes so i am a user so i can fill it it very well okay so what are the advantages of sso that is also done right so whatever the problem that we had with the previous approach or process, the solution to those problems become the advantage of SSO. Now let's move one step deeper in SSO authentication flow. Now let's see how this flow can be initiated and by whom. SSO based authentication flow either can be initiated by IDP or by SP. That is why it can be divided into two parts. One is IDP initiated flow. Another one is SP initiated flow. Now let's see both of them one by one. In IDP initiated flow, first user agent will send a request to IDP. Then IDP will ask for the credential from user agent and user is prompted for the authentication. So when user is successfully authenticated in IDP, then IDP generates something called SAML assertion and it will be signed by IDP. Now, if user agent wants to access a service provider, then IDP will send SAML assertion through user agent to service provider. Now, since you have already authenticated in IDP and IDP has already provided SAML assertion to SP and as there is a trust relationship between IDP and SP, now you can start accessing SP or I can say now session can start. 
Now with that SAML assertion, you can now start accessing other applications as well. You don't have to provide any credential further. So this is how IDP initiated flow works. So in SP initiated flow, first a user will try to access a service provider. So the user will first send a request to service provider. Now as the user is not authorized, so SP will redirect the request to IDP. Now again IDP will ask for the credential from user. So when the user is successfully authenticated in IDP, then IDP will generate something called SAML assertion. Now IDP will send the SAML assertion through user agent to SP. Now since you have already authenticated in IDP, so you don't have to provide any further credential to SP. Now you can start accessing SP or service provider. Or I can say now session can start. So this is how SP initiated SSO based authentication flow works. Okay, so we have seen like how SSO works with flow diagram. So that part also is done. So there is only one part which is left and that is SAML. Now let's understand about SAML briefly. Okay, so we are almost done, right? Now let's see the last topic which is left that is SAML. Let's understand SAML briefly. So SAML stands for Security Assertion Markup Language. Yes, it's an umbrella standard that covers Federation Identity Management and Single Sign-On that is SSO. So we have already discussed SAML SSO, right? Like how it works, why do we need it, what are the advantages that it has, almost everything. And SAML is an open standard protocol that can be used both for authentication and authorization. I hope you know the difference between authentication and authorization. So now we are using SAML 2.0 that came in March 2005. Okay. SAML transaction or SAML SSO transaction, it uses a very well-known language called XML. It is extensible markup language for standard communication purpose between IDP that is identity provider and SP that is service provider. So we have already discussed like how SP and IDP they are communicating between them, how they are interacting between them, right? So basically they are using XML as a language for communication purpose. Okay, so that's all for SAML. So you have learned SAML very briefly, right? So what is SAML? This part is also now done. Okay, so that's all for this video. I hope that you have understood and enjoyed this video. And again, I'm assuming that you have seen the part one before watching part two, because then only you will get complete knowledge of SSO. So we have seen many things in SSO, right? In a fun way with animations. Now, if you have any doubt, any queries in this video, please let me know by giving a comment in the comment section. I'll give you a reply on that for sure. If you want to see more video like this, you can follow my channel. Okay, so we all have understood a very great concept, right? In a different way, that is in a fun way. So thanks for watching. See you on the next video. For now, take care. Tata. Bye-bye.